CataractCoach.com. Anterior caps are tear and faco. So how do you finish the case and implant the IOL in the bag? So here's the beginning of the surgery. Look at the cornea. We've got those marks at the 180-degree meridian or close to it. That's the steep axis. And that means we're going to be putting in a toric IOL. In fact, it's a toric trifocal lens. So you certainly want to try to get a beautiful capsular axis like we're doing here. So we're going to end up with a very well-centered, perfectly round, intact, 5-millimeter capsular axis. So there's the axis. It looks great. But what's going to happen? During cataract surgery, during FACO, we're going to get a rip in that anterior capsule. Now, here's approximately where it happens. We're working in that area, bringing the nuclear pieces out of the capsule bag. Now, remember, the anterior capsule is, of course, very thin. It's a little bit uh, thicker than the posterior capsule, which can be 4 microns at its thinnest. The anterior capsule is somewhere in the range of about 14 microns, but still very, very thin. I mean, think about it. 14 microns is two red blood cells. So very thin tissue. And as we remove the cataract piece here, we're still not aware of it just yet. When that last cataract piece comes out, we can look and notice that, hey, there's a tear in that anterior capsule. Well, you can see it on the video in retrospect. At the time of, it's a little bit harder to notice. So adjusting the red reflex, not sure if we have a tear there just yet, but you're going to see it revealed once we remove the cortex. So going inside the eye here, and I'll start removing the cortex just in our typical manner. And then it'll become obvious that we have a rip there. The right-hand side of your screen, which is the patient's inferior. Now we see there's a rip. So let's remove the rest of the cortex first, the other areas where the capsular bag is stronger. Let's get all that cortex out first. And we'll leave that one area where the anterior capsular tear is for the end. So cleaning up, and you're going to be very careful. Now what's the risk? The danger is that that tear can rip around and zip towards the posterior capsule to the lens equator and then back towards the capsule and now you've got a wide open capsule. And if you have a wide open capsule, well, you can't put the torque lens in. You can't put the trifocal lens in. So what are you going to do? And this patient really wants that lens. So there's the rip you can see. So now we're going to be very cautious and not let the AC collapse. So while the eye probes on position one, taking that last little nuclear piece there, we're going to put the viscoelastic in with the second hand, and we're going to fill up the capsular bag. So here you take your foot and you go to position zero at the same time you inject, and we don't let that AC collapse. So there you go. Now don't overfill it, because if you overfill it, that additional stress will cause it again to rip out. So there we see it on the right-hand side of your screen to the patient's inferior. There's the anterior capsule rip. So here's how we're going to continue. We've got to put the lens in. Here it comes. Now, we want to get this lens in an appropriate position without having to do a lot of rotation within the bag because a lot of rotation within the bag may cause that tear to rip out more. So we're going to slowly put the lens in here, let that unfold, get it in the bag. Now, notice the orientation. I place it about the orientation marks on the optic, which are right at the haptic-optic junction. I place those about one clock hour before I want it. And now I can slowly dial it exactly where I want it to be. And now we'll remove viscoelastic very carefully. We're letting those arms open up nice and slowly. And again, I try, I'm trying not to have too much manipulation within the bag. I don't want to have to keep rotating the lens, etc. So that looks pretty good. Now, what should we do next? We've got to take out the viscoelastic, of course. But maybe we should try to seal up this incision first to make it a little bit more watertight. So... Here comes the, that's the IA probe squirting the eye. But yes, in fact, that's what we're doing. So using BSS on cannula, let's try seal up this incision. And that's so that when I take the IA probe out of the eye, we're not going to allow the AC to collapse. So we want to keep AC stability going on here, not, not a lot of motion. So now slowly taking out the viscoelastic. What have we done differently in our settings? Drop the flow rate. Instead of 60 cc's a minute, we've done 30 cc's a minute. Drop the infusion pressure a little bit. And you can still keep the high vacuum. So now I'll do a little bit final rotation, just barely getting it where I want it, getting those lines um, uh, marked up. You see the alignment there of the torque marks on the cornea, the torque marks on the eye well, and we're lining those up pretty beautifully. And then we'll get that central optic of the trifocal also centered in the Purkinje images. There you go. So that looks great. I can tell you the patient had a, a near-perfect plano outcome, and that did very well. So certainly your position was good. Now, again, not letting the AC collapse. 
getting it hydrated. You saw that technique of using two hands, injecting with the one hand through the paracentesis, while the other hand was pulling the IA probe out. Now, there may still be a little viscoelastic left, so let's just do an angle sweep here. There it is. So we'll get all that out, and we'll angle sweep it, and that'll come out the paracentesis. And now let's seal it up, and we can double-check the positioning, and it looks great. Now, this lens is going to be perfectly fine, perfectly stable. There's really no issue here. And we just dot in the exact position that we like here at the end, and it should stay, because remember, the lens is a little bit tacky, and it will adhere to the posterior capsule. So we're like that. We're just lining up the two Purkinje images to avoid parallax. And once we get those lined up, that looks fantastic. Torque marks also in, in pretty good alignment. So finish up the case here. Patients had a really nice outcome. And this is something you may have to deal with. Now putting a little triamcinolone here to help quell any post-op inflammation. And also will show us if there's any retained viscoelastic, right? And... That looks great. And then putting in finally some preserved free moxifloxacin. There it goes to the very end here. And that should do it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.